Hi guys, how's it going today? I, I'm just in the mood to have a reading vlog and I know I have said that I like to do specific reading vlogs for specific books and series and I still want to do those on occasion but I also really want to try doing just a very casual weekly reading vlog here for you. It is Saturday when I'm starting this, so technically it's gonna be a little more than a week, but um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read or vlog every single day, so I thought why not start now and um, maybe have it go to next Saturday and see how I feel about it. I would like it to be a regular thing that I do here, but we will wait and see. You know, I'm not gonna force myself to do something that doesn't feel comfortable or doable. Because sometimes I'm like, I can get a bunch of videos out and like how they go and be good. And then sometimes I just don't feel like doing anything and nothing I do I like. I've deleted so many videos that I just did not like how they turned out. And um, it's not that like I'm so self-conscious or whatever. It's just that I did not like that they just didn't feel like something I would want to watch. So I just got rid of them. But yeah, I am currently reading Loop by The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson. This is an arc that I received from a Goodreads giveaway. This book came out September 29th from what the spine tells me. And uh, it's new, so I wanted to try to read it and review it for you guys and for my Goodreads and stuff just to, you know, help authors out. It was very kind of them to send it to me and I'm glad I won it. It was pitched, I'll read you the back of it just cause it's fairly new and not a lot of people are talking about it that I know of. Stranger Things meets World War Z in this heart racing conspiracy thriller as a lonely young woman teams up with a group of fellow outcasts to survive the night in a town overcome by a science experiment gone wrong. Turner Falls is a small tourist town nestled in the hills of Western Oregon, the kind of town you escape to on vacation. Okay. <laughs> when an inexplicable outbreak rapidly develops, this idyllic town becomes the epicenter of an epidemic of violence as the teenage children of several executives from the local biotech firm grow ill and aggressively murderous. Suddenly the town is on edge and Lucy and her friends must do everything it takes just to fight through the night. So yeah, that's pretty much all that's happened. Like. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of this because it is new. There's a lot of science in this that I wasn't aware of and I like science. It was one of my favorite subjects in school, but you know, I listen to audiobooks that are science-y because they're just easier for me to grasp when I'm hearing them. I do a lot better audio when it comes to science and uh, so reading is kind of tough and right now I'm in the science-y portion, which doesn't happen until after page 200. So. You know, hopefully it's not the rest of the book where it's super sciencey and, you know, suspending your disbelief. But I did really love the beginning of this. It was so scary at one point. Like, I was legitimately frightened by a scene in one of the caves that happened. It was really cool. I've heard a lot of people say that this is great. Or a few people, not a lot of people. But I don't quite feel that way yet. I think that I'm just gonna have to wait and see how it decides to end. There's a lot of problematic things with this and the way that they talk about people. But, you know, horror tends to be kind of raunchy like that. So, I don't know. We'll see how I feel at the end. But I'm just going to continue reading this. And, yeah. Hope you guys are having a good day. Okay, so I finished The Loop by Jeremy Robert Johnson. It did take me a little while to get through this. I gave it four stars. I think I really liked it. I wrote a full review on Goodreads. So, if you want to read my full thoughts on this, you can there. If I were to say the good and the bad, just real quick, I would say the bad. There was a lot of really weird language in this. Like, um, there were some racial slurs used and some very strange interactions between teens and some sexual weird things that were said teens to each other and about teens from people who weren't. So that was a little strange. Didn't care for that too much, but I did like the horror in this. It was very good. The sci-fi was very good and I liked um, how easy it was to understand and everything like that. Um, I recommend this to people who, it's not like a typical zombie story, so you're not going to have to deal with, 
you know, the run of the mill, usual road trip, how those go. I think this one's pretty unique. And if you're looking for something that's within that realm, but a little bit different, I recommend this. I think that the, my favorite part's really, really the horror in it. It's very scary. There was one part inside of Cave that really, really terrified me. And then there was a section at the end when there was a drone and that was really scary. So um, it's been a while since a book has scared me like that. So I think that it was successful in that. It just had some really strange choices at the very beginning. Now I'm going to start reading Where the Woods End. This is by Charlotte Salter. I got this at a dollar store somewhere and I already read the first chapter and I like it so far. It's very cute and uh, I think it's a middle grade if I'm not mistaken. Maybe YA. I'll have to it looks like a middle grade but I'll have to let you know once I look at the good reads on it. So far it's just about this girl who lives in a forest that is kind of locked away in the middle of the woods. No one can get out but people can get lost within the woods so it's kind of like it closes itself off and she's trying to figure out why and uh, there's monsters and all kinds of weird creatures and then there's a creature that chases you your whole life and then when it catches you, I think it turns into your worst fear and kills you. I think that's what they said. But uh, I think it's going to be real spooky, but also kind of magical and empowering, I guess. So I'm pretty excited to read it. It sounds really cute. That's what I'm doing now. So I'll update you guys later. What's up, guys? <laughs> um, I hope you can see me okay. Um, on my squeaky bed. I'm on chapter 8, page 122 right now. And I'm really, really liking this. It's kind of creepy. Like, I didn't realize how much I like middle grade until I started reading this. And it's just so easy, so fun, light, and just fantastical. Like, I want to read more middle grade. Like, this is so good. And YA and adults, great and all. But there's just something different about middle grade that I don't think a lot of people give credit to. There's something beautiful about the simplicity of it. And not having to think too deeply about what you're reading while you're reading it. Not that it's not intelligent. <laughs> My husband's playing video games, if you can hear him cursing, by the way. Um, they're playing Among Us, if you don't know what that is. It's pretty interesting to watch people play it. But he's playing with the crew of our friends. And um, I'm just chilling in the bedroom reading. I about that far into it you can see and uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty quick read if I don't get distracted or too busy it's only 302 so uh, I'm getting close to halfway yeah I'm quite enjoying myself this was printed what year I don't even know what year this book came out 2018 so it's not that old it's pretty new actually and uh, I think if it's not too terrible towards the end, which I'm thinking it's gonna be pretty consistent, I might wanna pick up more of this author's work because I just like the style and even the cover was really cute. I'll have to show you when I'm done with it. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to check in with you guys and let you know what's up with reading. As far as my day goes, I went to work. It's Monday today. I was very moody <laughs> you ever just have days where you're just super moody and you don't know why well, that was today for me i i woke up feeling tired and i stayed up too late last night it's stupid i know and then i i get up super early and then i drive an hour hour and a half to work every day which is a sh crappy commute i hate it but i do like my job but I got there, I was in a good mood doing my job, and then all of a sudden I just, I don't know, I just felt crappy, and I think the tiredness plus I needed to eat something was not doing great for my mental <laughs> stability at the moment, but uh, I got through it and it got better. But, you know, some days are just so ridiculous. Like, some days are easy, and then some days I struggle with just being positive and not spiraling in my own head into this stupid hole of quit thinking too much. Why are you why are you doing this? Why are you turning every little thing that something happens or someone says or the way that someone reacts into something that it's not? So that's my anxiety struggle. <laughs> What's yours? We were going to have to babysit my niece this weekend, but my sister says that uh, she's gonna go with her grandparents on her dad's side. So I won't have that. Um, I was about to start planning, you know, activities that we could do, but since she's not coming, you know, we'll save that for next time. 
she's like five or six. I can't remember which one it is. So I usually try to have some kind of artsy activity for us planned. I have a Mercari account. I don't know if I can link it here, but if I can, I will. But if not, you know, whatever. I'm selling things that I no longer need or want. And that includes books. And so far I've been on there for like three days and I've already sold three things and they weren't the cheapest things I had either. So I'm pretty excited about that. I know they get like a percentage, but you can upcharge a little bit just to make up for what you want to get from that sale. The shipping, you can make it free or you can make them pay for it. But I have the tools to weigh everything and make sure I have the right shipping stuff on my own. So it's pretty exciting when I sold stuff like that quickly. I think my first item sold within 20 minutes of me posting it. So that was exciting. I know Poshmark's good for clothes and I use that too, but um, I didn't know that Mercari was that popular. I guess I had just seen one or two ads for it and then heard someone on BookTube talking about manga they bought there. So I thought I'd try it and so far so good. I'm going to buy my husband's part of his gift for Christmas on there if it's still there. Um, you know, people buy stuff and the, one of the things I'm wanting to get him, which I'm not going to say just in case he watches this video, is very rare and hard to find and so very expensive now that people are reselling it because it's no longer being made. So I'm going to have to spend over $100 on something that was probably originally like $50, and, which is not too bad, but it's still pretty rare. And the specific edition of the one I'm wanting, I'll be sure to let you know when we open them what it is because I'll do a Christmas little unopening vlog and what I got for Christmas vlog. I think that'll be fun. I don't know if I'm going to do Vlogmas yet. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but I think I want to do Vlogmas, but I might just do like a week at a time, kind of like this vlog. And um, we'll see. It just depends on how much time I have. I hope to, you know, have my Christmas shopping done before December even gets here because, you know, I don't know what the finances are going to look like then. And uh, it tends to be a little tight around that time of year, but if I can have it all done early, that'll be great. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited. I hope that my Poshmark and Mercari pays for his Christmas gifts because, you know, anytime anyone in my family is trying to get rid of clothes, I'm like, hey, give them to me if you're just gonna donate them because I'll try to sell them first. And then if they don't sell um, after, I think I give it a year or so, I donate them. So um, I try to make a little bit of extra cash here and there. It's not a ton. I don't sell them for very much, but it does add up. I've made a few paychecks off of that Poshmark and now Mercari, which is exciting. So um, yeah, check those apps out. If you have a bunch of junk that you don't want to get rid of or that you want to get rid of, but you also aren't super, super keen on just donating them like getting rid of them right now um, if you have the patience are a little bit tech savvy you can make a little extra cash on the stuff that you don't want anymore like I've got a couple of books on there that um, are in great condition and I just didn't like them or I had that someone gave me that I don't want so um, yeah I have sold some manga on there I've sold books and toys so yeah I just want to let you guys know what's up um, Tomorrow is Tuesday. I don't know how it's going to be at work. Some days are real busy and some days aren't. But we'll make it through. I uh, might read one more chapter before going to bed because I'm getting pretty tired. Anyways, I'll see you in the next update. Peace. Good morning, guys. <laughs> I have the hiccups. <laughs> it is 9.15 on Sunday, October 25th in the morning. I woke up kind of early today and uh, I just wanted to check in with you guys. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what I have the hiccups. I don't hardly ever get them anymore, but uh, I'm trying not to be too loud so I don't wake up JB. wanted to update you on what I'm reading. I have been really bad about not vlogging lately. So I have this bag that I got in a grab bag at a, I think it was a convention. I'm not sure which convention it was, but it was like a mystery bag. <laughs> In the dealer's room so i've been using it to keep my book in and my annotation note like supply supplies and my uh you know how i make notes on books if i think i should so i can tell you about them later and uh right now here's the cover for it i'm reading where the woods end by charlotte 
Psalter. I am on chapter 9, page 141, and it's really, really cute. This is a well-written middle grade to me. I like it a lot. I think that I'm going to have to read more middle grade because I really, really like it. Also, last night, I think I ordered, I've ordered some books lately. <laughs> I got paid and I bought JB some Christmas stuff and then I bought a couple things for myself. Oh my gosh, anybody else struggle with this if you're making YouTube content, trying not to hiccup and burp and cough and stuff? I bought four manga, I think, and then I bought a book. Very, very cheaply, too. Some of them were a little more than others because they're older and out of print, but I'm really, really excited because I got the la last three of Kagi Tora, so I'm going to get to do a reading vlog of that, which I've always wanted to finish that series. I really liked it, and I'm going to see if I still like it, but uh, it's out of print, so you can't really find it anymore. I tried to find a bunch of different, the next volumes of manga that I want to read, like ones that I need to continue, but everywhere was out of stock or charging like $20 for a volume and I'm just not about that unless it's like super rare or something. I got a really good deal on a new series that I've watched the anime, but I want to wait and do like an unboxing of all those packages to show you. I don't want to spoil everything, but I'm very excited about the deals that I got on those. I'm very big on this channel about talking about how much I paid for my book. <laughs> my books, sorry. Um, I think it's important, to me at least, to know. It, it helps me personally keep myself in check and how I'm not going to, you know, spend my whole paycheck on books books because that's so easy to do especially with manga it's so expensive i understand that you know we should be supporting the industry industry and buy new books and support these people goodness honey he's just breathing real loud but i know everybody has their own strug struggles and still wants to enjoy manga even if they don't have as much money coming in as some other people and there's nothing wrong with having a lot of money i watch so many booktubers who obviously have money because they they buy so many books and they buy so many brand new manga and that's totally fine. Your money, you do what you want, support the business. But I personally don't have a huge budget for brand new manga and stuff like that and the collector's ed editions and such, even though I'd like to. So I have to pick and choose where I buy brand new mon manga and where I buy used and where I buy used books. I buy manga a lot more brand new than I do regular books personally. I don't know why, I guess I just, I get impatient with waiting for the next volume on a manga, so I'll just go buy it sometimes if I find it in a bookstore. And with a book, I have more patience for some reason. <laughs> that being said, our local bookstore shut down, so I can't even go do that anymore unless I go like an hour and a half away to pick up books. So frustrating, but what can you do, I guess? Pandemics, they're so wonderful. But um, I just wanted to talk to you guys. I wanna make a video this weekend, but I'm not quite sure what I wanna do. Maybe I'll just show you some things that I collect. I don't, I don't know. It's really hard because most of the time I have like an idea or it's time for a wrap up or a TBR or something. But right now I want to make content, but the only thing I want to do is vlog, vlog, but I can only use my husband's phone because once again, money is kind of an issue and my phone's acting weird and I can't, um, at the moment afford to get a new, a new one and cameras are like $600. So um, I'm trying to save up for something, whether it be a new phone or a new camera. Probably a new phone because it would double as both. But uh, my camera on my phone is garbage anyway. But his is a little better and he lets me use it and I can transfer stuff to the computer to edit. And uh, as long as I am around him, I can use his phone. But when I go to work during the day or when I'm doing something by myself, I can't really just take his phone. So it's it's a struggle. It's like... I can only vlog when I'm with him, and then when I'm with him, I want to do stuff with him. So, you know, I hope you guys understand that. I'm sure that I'm not the only person who deals with some, something like that. But I got this new candle. I'm just staring at it at a Kroger, which is like a grocery store around here. I'm not sure if they're all over the states or if it's just like a local place. It's Tuscany Candle brand premium marbled wax copper leaves with essential oils. And I know essential oils can be bad for animals. But I only burn it for like an hour and Hermes usually not in the room when I burn it. So I try not to. I don't really know all about that, but I try to be cautious anyways. But it smells so good, y'all. Like, I love fall candles. It almost has like a, a little bit of like an aloe vera smell, but like fruity. Definitely leaves. It's so good. I love candles. I think I prefer fall candles over like winter Christmassy candles because the smells are a lot more warm and 
I can taste them, if you know what I mean. Like, they taste good. <laughs> I know that's weird. I don't actually eat them, but it's like the flavor of them, like, goes through my nose. And just, it makes me feel like I'm having apple pie, coffee, and hot cocoa and warm things. And the Christmas ones always feel a little cold, but they're all good. Halloween's coming up. Yes, the 24th. Halloween's going to be, what day? On a Saturday? So, that Friday on the 30th, I have to wear a Halloween costume to my job. And we're going to take a picture. Speaking of which, I've got to finish my costume. I've done the wig. I guess I can show you that. That'd be fun. Um, let me go grab it. So, here's my wig. If you can't tell, I'm going to be Isabel from Animal Crossing. I think it's the one from New Horizons that wears, like, the the reddish peach shirt with the the leaves on it like a tropical hawaiian shirt that's the one i want to do so i i got the wig it was really long cheap at walmart for like six bucks and i cut it it's not the greatest cut but i cut it and then i used the extra hair as the little thing on top and then i used some felt and some uh, pipe cleaners and some hot glue because i didn't have any other glue to attach it up here so looks pretty good i'm Hoping it wears well. You'll find out that day, I guess, because I'm not going to try it on now. I got to paint the shirt because I've got a plain shirt. I just need to paint the leaves on it. And then I've got the shorts, even though they're, it's supposed to be like a khaki short skirt, but I don't feel comfortable wearing that. So I'm just going to wear short shorts. And yeah, that's my costume. Pretty simple. Everyone there that's a woman played Animal, animal Crossing together for a while. So it'll be really fun. And I'm really excited about it. I think that uh, they're gonna laugh and they're gonna like it. It'll be like a little fun homage to a time when we were playing that game. We have to do that before Friday, so <laughs> that's something I need to do. Also, um, I'm working on a project that I'm thinking of doing here on my channel. And if you guys are watching this, which I know I don't have a ton of viewers, but if you do watch my stuff regular regularly, I would appreciate a comment on this. Um, I want to start. I've already tweeted about it. I've seen people like Mama Loves Manga and Shay Geeks Owl and a few other booktubers, manga tubers do this, where they take like an hour or two every once in a while and they just sit down on live stream on YouTube and they just read. They read manga or they read books. They just catch up on their reading or they force themselves to take the time. Like I guess if you're really busy, it's really hard to tell yourself that it's okay to sit down and read books and do stuff like that and kind of give yourself time to get something done and not just on that but like art and cleaning and getting something done that you have to get done like it could be homework you know um I'm thinking of doing that myself on my channel I want to force myself to get things done and it might just be you know kind of like in school whenever you're given a due date I want something like that so if I'm given <laughs> given an hour of time at least once a week to do this. I'm hoping that that means I could get something done. So I'm going to try to do that. Let me guys know if you'd be interested. <laughs> oh. So we just watched one of the scariest, I think the scariest movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, called Hereditary. It was kind of a slow burn starting off, but like I was complimenting the movie because it has some really good shots and some like really cool, like strange things that you don't understand why they're showing you. And then it's like, oh, okay, now it makes sense, you know? And just some amazing transitions between shots and just little hidden things in the frame yeah. and all kinds of cool stuff like that. But the end of it is terrifying. One of the scariest things that have ever happened. <laughs> it was the worst timing in the world. So, I just want to say this real quick, okay? I don't believe in, like, supernatural shit. I've never been that kind of person ever in my life. I'm very skeptical, and if I see it, I'll believe it, but it's yet, but whatever. I'm a little shaky. <laughs> I don't get scared over movies because, I don't know, I just don't. I guess I've just numbed myself to them, but this is horrifying, and we were at the very antithesis, like, the, the of the movie. The peak moment like of the, the movie. the literal very last little, uh, of the movie. Tell them what happened. Well, pretty much like it's being asked a question. Uh, uh, the, the movie is asking a question. And right when it asks the question and we're like, you know, like what's it? And my computer comes on and just shines light and everywhere in the, the room. Whole, we had all the lights off, okay? <laughs> and the computer had went dead, like, you know, asleep. And it's way back there behind us. And so we think it's our kitchen light. Yeah, I thought the kitchen light came on. And I was about to run the hell up out of here. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. 
I have never in my life had such timing. <laughs> I immediately looked, but he didn't. <laughs> no, I was like, because I was so sure it was the kitchen. Like I didn't, I didn't even think about the computer. I was just like, uh-huh. why, <laughs> why would the kitchen light come on? <laughs> and I think I even said, "Don't worry, it's just the computer." Like <laughs> yeah. he didn't even ask, and I knew. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> like I knew maybe it was going to be spoopy when I, the the corner stuff started happening. Mm-hmm. But that right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I know we're going to watch this tomorrow or whenever you decide to do something with it and be like, it's so silly. Yeah. But, like, right now it's like, ah! Like, that's the worst <laughs> thing. So, like, my adrenaline's pumping so much. <laughs> if you were not here. Yeah. And that shit happened. Oh, God. I would have ran down the street. I would rather be out there. Yeah, that was nuts. That was insane. We thought we would we would tell you about it. Like, that literally just happened. So, um... I don't want to go in any of our rooms now. <laughs> we got... It's it's Halloween, and we wanted to watch a spooky movie, and we heard that Hereditary, Hereditary was very good. And it is. It is a great horror movie. Please don't watch it alone. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> watch it alone. You'll be fine. No! <laughs> I'm brave, okay? I am not just saying, Ooh, I don't get scared. <laughs> From the time I was little, I have been watching true crime, reading scary books, and watching horror movies, good and bad. And I have never, except Chucky, (laughs) and there's reasons, been ever, ever have an inch of horror, like, scaredness in me. Like, the hesitancy to walk into a dark room. Yeah, nothing has ever made me go, See, that's the thing is that I grew up afraid of everything so anytime I would watch a horror movie for the next week I would like run through doorways and like I always felt like something was like right behind me when I, I was going through yeah. and I never felt that or I felt that way up until I was like 12 13 years old and then I kind of grew out of it and watching this movie it makes me it, it reminds me of like how I felt as a kid after watching a horror movie like I got that same like Ugh, like, like gross who, feeling who you know? ever had the odd on- Audacity to make this movie? <laughs> I don't. Are you okay? This was bad. Like I'm, I'm scared, and I like I'm gonna have to watch something else before I go to bed. Like I need something like a big palate, palate cleanser. cleanser, huge palate. I'm not talking like an episode of a comedy YouTube. I'm talking like a whole nother ass movie. <laughs> like I need something dumb, like white chicks. We to can watch. watch too cute. Mm-mm. Kittens yeah. and puppies ain't gonna do it. I need something <laughs> dumb, funny, okay. like Adam Sandler. <laughs> I need something. I need something to make me dumb. <laughs> no, I need something to make me just not think you yeah. know something that just makes me feel happy and like dumb yeah and i the only two things that come to mind are adam sandler and white chicks yeah those are in clue but we watched that very recently yeah so i need something because i can't go i can't i can't spooky. be scared to, i can't be scared to walk in a dark room i'm, I'm almost 30 <laughs> i can't do this uh, and you're gonna be annoyed with me clinging to you all weekend <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I sound dramatic. I've just never felt like this. <laughs> You're good. Okay. It was a good movie, though. If you're looking for a good horror movie. Don't watch it alone. <laughs> check out Hereditary. I keep thinking I'm saying it wrong. It's Hereditary, right? Yeah. Like, I keep thinking it's Heredity or something. No, Hereditary. No, hereditary. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's probably out on DVD. Blue. Oh, yeah. it's It came out like a few years ago. I remember... I remember it made a big splash. Everybody was saying it was really good. And that's why we watched it tonight. I mean, I remember hearing people talk about it, and my coworker talks about it a lot. But I guess I just had an idea for what it was going to be, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So I guess I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And people hype up movies all the time, and you're like, I guess it was okay after all that hype. But Yeah, we actually went into it. I was like, this movie better blow my mind with how much it's been hyped up. And Chelsea's like, yeah, it's probably going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I have expectations for good horror. Yeah. When I know it's a crappy horror, I don't care. I just have fun with it. But when it, someone tells me this is a good horror movie, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure. It, Dang. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think, I don't know. It's something about those last, like, 15, 15, no, like 15 minutes of the movie from the fire part onwards. Yeah. That's when the movie just takes off, and it's just like... 
the whole, it's just ugly. Like, I don't know how to, it's like a nightmare. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like the same feeling of, like, inescapable dread mm -hmm. that you feel when you're, like, in a nightmare or something. It's like the scene covered in ants. It's like, that's how it made me feel. Yeah. I still don't have all the answers, but I think that's part of the... Yeah, I still don't know exactly. The, the better, yeah. forgive my phrasing, the the climax, I mm -hmm. guess, of the movie was built up through, it's 128 minutes. Mm -hmm. The whole movie, other than the last maybe 20, 15 minutes, was literally trying to confuse you and put you on edge to like, is this what's happening? Like giving you these red herrings and making you think you've got it figured out and making you draw these conclusions and it, it just, it keeps edging you. Yeah, and I I, uh, I still don't know exactly what's, you know, what's what. But I know enough to understand most of the movie. Yeah. But you, there's still some that I'm like, I have to make my own headcanon about. But and even, was, even was, on top of that, it's like, I don't know. One person who told me to watch this said, if you watch it multiple times, you'll see stuff you missed. And I'm like, no, I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> you don't watch it? I was thinking of starting it up. <laughs> Starting it up again. Maybe in like 10 years I'll be ready again, but I can't, y'all. Like, I cannot. There was that one part, the first part in the corner that I told you. Mm -hmm. didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see it. And she was like, oh my God. And I was like, what? And I like searched around the screen and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't see it either. Good thing the scene was so long. Yeah. Because I bet a bunch of other people didn't I see it. I think that, thing. I mean, I'm sure they did that on purpose so that people yeah. would like, you know, 10, 12 seconds into Why the scene be here? like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's a little eerie to be looking at one scene. <clears throat> no movement from the character in the scene slash no movement of the camera. And then the scene changes for the viewer. Yeah. Like for it to just completely change from okay. I, it, it messes with your mind because it makes you think like, what else am I not seeing? Yes. Like, like even not looking at the movie anymore. Now in real life, I'm like, what am I not seeing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go in dark rooms. <laughs> I don't. Because to me, it was very similar. I was telling you about that this morning. Going from the difference between going from a completely lit room to turning the lights off and you can't see for a half a second and then your eyes adjust. Yeah. There's like a half a second of you're completely blind. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I see. Yeah. It was like that, that room. That room was like that. You might not get as crazy of a adrenaline rush or anything from watching it because... <laughs> you didn't have the light. Cause, yeah, because that was like... I know it sounds silly, but that shit brought it into the world. Yeah. I was like, it's behind me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's behind it's me. It's back there, and I'm scared. And this, and it was just... It I, was just perfect The timing. layout of our house and everything was just too... Mm. It just completely lit up, like, lit up the and entire room. I don't think that's ever happened on the computer. No! That's another thing, too. It's like, my computer doesn't randomly turn on. It's never done that. Yeah. And that's why it's just like... It turned out that my email got signed out. Yeah. And it, it was it came on to tell me For that my reason. email was signed out. But out of nowhere. And it just lit up the entire living room. Yeah. And it was just like From behind. I was just oh my god. And the fact that like it cast the shadows on the wall too, so I was just like Ah <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, oh I I'm tingly. I know. Like it just it just made it so real all of a sudden. I was like, I'm not watching a movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like it's literally the very end of the movie yes. it couldn't have waited three more minutes <laughs> like three more seconds yes. <laughs> like anything it, it wasn't just when it happened it's like literally milliseconds perfect timing like if it had just waited it would have been fine yeah we would have been like huh that's weird yeah it was just literally <laughs> like hanging on the edge of a question yeah and of it, this movie and you're just like like literally the the most draw you in moment of the movie and it just <laughs> that was the worst. That was the worst. Oh. Chelsea's like it's just a computer and I was like because literally for the time it took her to tell me that credits were rolling on the mm -hmm. on the TV so it was fine but she was just like I had to she, tell him she was like it's just the computer and I was like <laughs> <laughs> it was just like this for oh my god <laughs> Oh my god, don't have a heart attack. <laughs> I had to 
tell you because I, I knew that you were not looking for a reason. I was like, it's it's literally just the computer. I thought I thought for sure I because my computer never turned on before. I thought for sure someone turned the kitchen light on. Yeah. And uh, we were about to hear. Like, <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck was about to happen. Okay, so here's another question. <laughs> I'm trying not to spoil this movie too bad. Um, so does that mean that this hmm is allergic to peanuts? <laughs> I don't. I didn't take it that way. I'm just being silly. Yeah, no. <laughs> I I I love the use of themes though. There's like a few themes throughout the movie that like play throughout the entire movie. I don't know. I just really appreciate when people. When like directors and writers like they they hang on to one thing and it's and it's like t- it's so important it seems like such a silly thing that doesn't mean anything and then by the end of the movie it's like such an important piece of the puzzle you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i think that's really really good storytelling i wonder if that's like the only movie they're gonna make of this uh i don't know i i hope they don't make a second one because it doesn't need one. I know. Like, I'm they would just be try- retrying to capture the magic of the first one if they did. Well, I mean, like, if they continued it is what I mean. Probably not. We would have heard about it. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if they, it doesn't matter if it's a sequel or a remake. If they tried to, if they made a, se- if they made another one, it would just be like. It has a really. It would just, it would just sell based off the name. It's got so a really wouldn't. high rating on IMDb, too. I can see right there. Mm-hmm. I wanted to tell you guys about this like we we decided we were going to tell you about it because i am in the middle of making a random vlog like i haven't really done much in it but i have to throw this in there <laughs> yeah i told you i was like do you want to vlog i need to get this out it seems like something we should talk about yes i need to get that out of my system and i do feel better now that i've talked about it yeah good don't let people tell you that posting your feelings on social media is stupid because to me it's therapy even if it's you shouldn't post it all the time Sometimes you just gotta make it. I've made so many videos and deleted them. Happy Halloween! It's probably past Halloween when you see this, but I uh, hope it was nice and spooky. Yeah. Shake it out. Shake it out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now we gotta watch TikToks. That'll help. <gasps> That's what we need. We need TikTok. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you stop it. All right. Love you. I love you. I'll let you guys go. We'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Bye. So I didn't vlog on our trip, but I am on the vlog. Our ice cream. I got the chair. Yeah, he got. What did you get? A brownie. Sunday. Hot fudge. Yeah. Mm, I got <laughs> cotton candy, the kid size, because I I don't want to tempt. Last time I had um, Baskin Robbins, my stomach hated me. So we're gonna see if it does it again. Yay! Bye. Hey guys, so I wanted to make a final clip for this vlog so that I could tell you guys about the book I just finished, Where the Woods End. So I'm going to set the phone down so I can talk to you easier. Okay, so real quick, I wanted to tell you guys about the book I just finished. Sorry, the dryer's going in the background. But I finished Where the Woods End by Charlotte Salter. This is one I've been working on for a while now. It took me so long to get through this. Not because it's bad. It's a great book. I think that it has really, really good writing. I was very, very interested in the whole book the whole time I was reading it. It is a, I think, 5 to ninth grade level. But it was very scary. There were so many moments that I was like, this is horrifying. Like, I think if I read this as a fifth grader, I would be scared out of my mind. Like, it was so gory and bloody and just disgusting descriptions of these monsters and these areas and just all kinds of different like settings and it was really good i really liked this i don't know if i would recommend it to everyone who is of that age i think that you know if you're a parent or a guardian or a friend and you know the kid can handle those kinds of things, this is a great book. I think it would be really fun for someone who really likes spooky adventure stories about a girl who overcomes things that she's scared of, and she battles difficult things with even, even within her own family and um, has to overcome them, and there's some abuse and some murder and some loss of friends' family and lots of gross descriptions in this but i do highly recommend it i think i'm going to give it uh four stars i think that this has some really really good things set in it 
and some really, really beautiful setting, like not beautiful, but like well described setting. So I think that's my number one thing about it is the setting of it. And uh, I really liked Pippet. He was really, really cute and funny. And he was just this little weasel sidekick. You can see him on the cover on her shoulder right here. But uh, I think that's all for this vlog. I'm going to call it a day. And uh, my cat's staring at me. It's kind of creepy. But I will see you guys in the next vlog. I hope you have a fantastic day. Please, it's Please give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more reading vlogs, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Harmony, what you looking at? Oh, he coming. Uh oh, he wants to play.